Well, hello again, and welcome to A Creative Mind Fiction. This is an online audio version of flash fiction and short stories written by Carrie Zilka and myself, Alice Nelson. For more information about the authors as well as past episodes, all of that and more can be found at acreativemindfiction.com. This special horror-filled episode is brought to you by audible.com. Get your hands on a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash fiction. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a guest author who's contributing a horror story for our October Scary Story Fest month, written by Australian Ken Allen. Yay! He's a master of devilish tales, a crime fiction slash thriller novelist, and engagement specialist from Brisbane, Australia. He can be found on LinkedIn under his full name, Kenneth James Allen. The story is titled Witch Hunt, written by Ken Allen and narrated by Alice Nelson. My name is Jordan Wilkes, and I'm completely screwed. I'm all alone. My friends are gone, dead I suppose, and if the last few days are anything to go by, I'll be next. I'm not telling you this for sympathy. I'm hoping that one day someone will piece all of this shit together. For the record, this was all Luke's idea. Some stupid impulse to find the grave of the last person to be executed for witchcraft. Come on, a grave from the 1700s? It'll be fun, he said. Plus, you guys can help me write my journalism paper. It didn't take much convincing, and it didn't make any difference Luke didn't study journalism or attend any college. For us, any excuse was a good excuse. We'd done plenty of stupid shit before, so why not hitchhike to the middle of nowhere and search for graves? (laughs) Given it was also Luke's idea to take a shortcut through Berkham Forest, it was fitting he was first to disappear. Given that Luke had the map when he disappeared, it was damn fortunate that Jody was there. Jody was the daughter of an SAS officer, and she too would be a member of the armed forces if it wasn't for her three assault charges. She took stock of the situation and provided a cool head while I was losing my shit. Shut the fuck up, she spat in my face. He's not fucking here, and he ain't coming back. How the hell do you know that? Maybe he wandered off for a piss in the middle of the night and got lost. Jody grabbed me by the collar and hauled me over to Luke's tent. Because there are no tracks, genius. Nothing. She stared off into the woods. It's like he disappeared. Yeah, well, we need to get the fuck out of here and call the police. I looked at my phone on the off chance some company built a tower nearby while we slept. No one had. Jody thrust a knife into my face. And when I say a knife, I don't mean a Swiss army knife. I mean a big Rambo fuck off kind of knife. Take this, she said evenly. I awkwardly took hold of the handle and felt the weight of the blade. As I admired the steel, a loud schlack broke my concentration. Where the hell did you get that? Jody quickly placed the gun in her waistband. Best you don't know. Now let's pack this shit up and head out. We're going to make a beeline for the highway. Thank God she knew where she was going and had the forethought to pack something more useful than a mobile phone and change of underpants, which makes it a damn catastrophe that she disappeared on night two. The highway lay undiscovered, Jody's tough exterior crumbling as the light disappeared and we opted for cover over stumbling around in the dark. We sat in the tent staring at each other, the weapons between us and the vow to stay awake lingering around us. My blinks became longer and Jody grabbed my shoulder. Stay with me, she whispered and then she cocked her head sideways. Do you hear that? The last thing I remember as darkness suffocated me was a flapping sound. When morning broke, Jody was nowhere to be found. Just like two mornings ago, there were no tracks beside mine and no trace of where she went. I spent a good twenty minutes pivoting in the mud, looking through the mass of trees, trying to figure out which way to go, waiting for my friends to return. A snapping twig in the distance stole my attention, and I held my breath as I tried to trace its source. The second seemed like an hour as finally my flight reflex kicked in. I hurriedly stuffed my tent into my backpack and took a brisk march, traveling in the same direction Jody had led us the day before. Surely the edge of the forest was in scope. Surely my world had not collapsed to a continuous landscape of trees, streams, and moss-covered rocks. I felt like a hamster in a wheel, exerting maximum energy and traveling nowhere. Every noise, every movement increased my pace until the surroundings were a blur, With every hundred meters I walked, I hoped the end of this horror would be over the next rise. However, it wasn't. It never was. I eventually reached a small clearing, and I clung to a tree to catch my breath. Trees sprang out in every direction, 
and whatever sky I could see was a deep blue, the day becoming dusk, and the dusk signaling the end. Emotionally overrun, I cried. I'm not afraid to admit that. I thought about everything. My family, my siblings. I wished I had never agreed to go with Luke. Fuck them all. I drew the knife from my belt. I wanted to end it, to take my own life before it was taken from me. But I couldn't. I don't give a shit what you call it, weakness or resolve. The fact was, I was going to find out what was happening and if given the opportunity to sink my knife deep into them. For Jody. For Luke. For myself. I waited under a cover of leaves and behind two fallen pines, the gap between them giving me a high-definition viewing experience. I waited for the taker, whatever it was. As light receded, silence consumed the space. The small fire I had started next to the tent had petered out into a thin column of smoke that reached the foliage. A cool breeze engulfed me, sending a shiver running the length of my spine, as dark shapes descended on the campsite. The faceless figure seemed to float effortlessly over the ground, focused on one thing. I took silent, shallow breaths as I tried to reconcile what I was seeing. My heart pounded wildly out of control as I watched them congregate, five silhouettes in total. Then they stopped and came together as if to consult and formulate a plan. They knew something wasn't right. Suddenly they turned as one, inky blackness focused on me. I held my breath, hoping something else had grabbed their attention. I realized the knife I was holding would have little effect against some sort of reaper. I jumped up out of the leaf cocoon and ran as the shadowy figures gave chase. If death came to me, I'd rather not be looking at it. Guided purely by whatever moonlight penetrated the canopy, I sprinted, stumbled, and pulled my way through the wooden barriers. My lungs burnt, my breath heavy. In the distance, I saw two lights. I adjusted my run towards them and realized what I had found. The highway! I pumped my legs and busted out through the clearing from soft underbrush to hard asphalt. The vehicle skidded to a halt, stopping inches away from my outstretched arms. Without question, I climbed into the cab. Go, go, go! I yelled at the driver. I peered through the window as the utility took off, and the dark figures had stopped at the edge of the wooded area. Their heads turned as they followed my departure. I felt tired in the silence as the vehicle rumbled along. I could feel sleep pulling me under. As I sank beneath the surface, hands gripped me. I was powerless against their pull, and I could once again feel the cool air over my unresponsive body. Something hard was placed against my back. I was carried, lurched sideways, and then heaved up. The flame woke me from my unconsciousness. I blinked at the yellow light and took in my surroundings. People, a sea of a hundred of them, stood before me, silent, unwavering. Around the outside of the gathering were a series of torches and figures wearing dark cloaks. The torch flames that licked the darkness provided the only light. A scream rang out. I turned to see Luke, and beside him, Jody, both struggling furiously against their bounds. What the fuck are you fuckers doing? Luke cried out. I screamed for help as Jody taunted the crowd for a fight, our voices a cacophony amongst the silent masses. Our cries were left unanswered as a figure stepped forward, their face shrouded by a black cloak. They slowly pulled back their hood. Under God's laws, you have been found guilty of witchcraft. You are hereby sentenced to burn at the stake until you are dead, your ashes to be sealed within the woods. God have mercy on your souls. We screamed begged, pleaded. All ignored as torches descended to set light to the sticks at the base of our poles, the crowd's clamor increasing. I squeezed my eyes shut and blocked out the cries. I have succumbed. I am alone. The end. That was a great story. Thank you, Ken Allen, for allowing us to share your devilish tale. It was amazing. I had a blast reading it. And I want to thank you, listeners for checking out our October Horror Fest guest story. Remember, folks, you can find Ken on LinkedIn under his official title, Kenneth James Allen. And if you're a writer and would like to participate in our weekly LinkedIn Writers Contest, check out acreativemindfiction.com. There are links to all the writing stories on the website. Be sure to find us on iTunes on your iPhone or Podkicker on your Android device. Just search for A Creative Mind Fiction Podcast and hit the subscribe button. And don't forget, get your free audiobook download by going to audibletrial.com slash fiction. Thank you again, Ken, and thank you for listening. And we'll have another original story from Carrie and myself next week. Take care. Bye-bye.